going to begin with the envision process as always. This is where we think about what we want our final project to look like. In your kit, you have a piece of cardboard and then you have all of these different shapes. If you want to use other objects for shapes like the bottle of glue that you might have at home or a bottle of lotion or a Tupperware container to get different shapes than what we have here, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to place these pieces on my cardboard just to get an idea of what I might want my robot to look like. I can try different shaped heads and different bodies. Could go for a BB2 look. And once I've fully envisioned my robot, I can move on to learn the craft of quilling. I'm going to begin by wrapping the paper around the different templates. When you're wrapping your paper around your templates, you can wrap any direction. So I could wrap around this way, or I could wrap around this way. I think I want a little bit of a smaller head here, so I'm going to wrap around this way. The way to do this is to take your piece of paper, use the edge of your template to kind of line it up so it's nice and straight, and just wrap it around. Oh no! These two don't meet. Well, the best solution is to take another piece of paper and wrap it around to bridge that gap. This has the added advantage of making it stronger. glue I'm putting it on the paper I'm being very careful to make sure I don't get it on the template it's gonna happen if I get glue on the template if you guessed that the paper is gonna stick and it's gonna be impossible to get off you're absolutely correct this nice and strong so instead of just using two pieces I'm going to use a third piece just to make sure I get some extra strength gently pull my piece off the template. And if I want my corners to be sharper, more pointed, and less rounded, all I have to do is squeeze them a little bit. If I'm ready to commit to this spot, I can glue it down right away. If I want, I could do a couple shapes first and make sure that they're exactly where I want them before I glue them down. And that's what I'm going to do. I've already made a circle using this template. Now I can decide how much space I want to leave for the neck. Do I want a really short neck? Do I want a really tall neck? Do I want it to be kind of curved off to the side? That might be cute. So that's where I'll put these. I'm going to start by gluing this rectangle down first. Using my toothpick and my little glue, I'm just gonna scrape a tiny, tiny bit of glue along the edge. It seems like this is not gonna work at all, that there might not be enough glue, but I promise you that there is. Now I 
have all of my glue. It's just a thin layer, but that's okay because I don't want glue slopped all over my cardboard anyway. I'm going to put it exactly where I want it because once it's glued down, it's going to be really hard to move. I'll just press it into place. I'm going to do the same thing with this circle. now this robot is pretty plain so I need to think about what I could do to make it look more interesting inside his body that would look really cool I do like how a circle looks inside another circle but I think this one is a little small for my purposes so I'm going to use this lotion bottle and remember I want to use more than one layer to make it stronger Once it's all the way glued, I can gently pull it off. I decide where I want to put it. Remember, we envision first before we commit. Kind of like it off to the side a little bit. And I'll spread my glue along the edge just a little bit. might notice that you can see a little bit of the glue around the edges of the circle. When the glue dries, it'll be clear, so you won't need to worry about that. You can continue adding to your robot using the template shapes that you have. Next time, we're going to talk about how to use the quilling tool to make circles and how to fold a piece of paper into a zigzag to make a small square. Mm -hmm.